Hey everyone and uh, welcome to Dapper Dash. Today I have a special tutorial for you, something that I know will provide a lot of value for you, regardless of whether you're a beginner or an advanced Power BI user. I believe this is something that will help you anywhere along your journey as a Power BI developer. So I got together with a group of marketing professionals and we talked about an idea for a dashboard that they wanted to build for a client. Now they provided me with the following mock-up and this mock-up they built using a website tool called Figma. Now the end goal for today is to take the concepts that they provided for me on this mock-up and recreate them inside of Power BI. So in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I approach building every element of this dashboard. Because the goal today is not just to take screenshots and use them as templates, but it's actually to learn different techniques and learn about the capabilities of Power BI. So without further ado, Let's get started. All right, so let's get started with our blank Power BI file here. And just as a reminder, this is what we're gonna be building here. So this is the mockup that I was provided and I am tasked with rebuilding this inside of Power BI. And so the way that I'm gonna work is I'm gonna to work to start from the background first. So I'm gonna build the background, everything that you see and the first thing that you'll notice about the background is it's not just a solid color. You see this sort of blue hue right here, and then you sort of see some purple, some purple and pink hues, and then back to a blue hue. So they're using a sort of gradient to fill this background. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing in Power BI first. So going into our Power BI file, I'm gonna go and set first the canvas settings. That's gonna be a custom canvas. And I'm gonna use the dimensions that they had provided for me. And so that is a custom height of 934. And we're gonna use a width of 1245. And that's good for the canvas settings. So now we gotta set the background and we gotta set the wallpaper. So we're gonna start with the background. And for the background, we need a gradient. And so in order to do that, we really can't do that inside of Power BI. So follow along with me and we're gonna open up PowerPoint. So here I am inside of PowerPoint, just a blank PowerPoint uh, template, all I really need is to be able to create a rectangle. Now a rectangle you can build inside of Power BI, so that's all normal, but what you can't do inside of Power BI is really be able to build a gradient. And so I'm gonna right click on this rectangle that I just created, and I'm gonna go ahead and format shape. First thing is I'm gonna remove the line that's on the outside. I don't want a line or a border. And then we're gonna go to fill. Now inside of fill, go ahead and select gradient fill. We do want it to be linear. And when I was looking at the mockup, the gradient seems to be going from sort of this left side. So maybe top left down to the bottom right. So I want to make sure that my gradient, the direction here, this first one is top left to bottom right. So that's why I want to do my gradient. And then I, I don't want all of these stops. So go ahead and remove all of the stops except for the two on the edge. Now everything else we're gonna leave the same. It's gonna be linear. It's gonna be a 45 degree angle, but we are gonna set the colors for our stops. So for this first one selected, if you go to color, I want this to be my blue color. So my blue hue. So I'm gonna enter in four AE nine FF. Now at first it's gonna seem like a really, really sky blue color, but don't worry, I'll show you what this is gonna look like at the very end. And now we're gonna to go to our right gradient, our right stop, and we're gonna color this one our pink color. And this one is gonna be D4, D4, 7, A, FF. And same thing, you'll notice this is a bright pink color, not to worry, we'll worry about that in a little bit. Now, one thing that I wanted to call out is with this gradient, to me, this doesn't really look like it's an even 50%. Most of this, from what I can see, is that most of this is blue. And then once you get more towards the edges, it starts to get a little bit brighter pink. And so I'm gonna add one more stop in here. And I'm gonna move this one roughly about 75%. So you can see that most of my page will actually be blue. And then towards the edge, it'll have that stronger pink color. So this is looking pretty good. The last thing I might wanna do is, is you can resize this if you want. 
So I can set this to be the height and width of my Power BI file, which is 934 pixels. Um, this might look really, really big by 1245 pixels. So I might just scale it back to 100% to be honest. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. But anyway, we go back to our box here. And now the last step is to save this. So I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna save this picture. Make sure this is a PNG image and I'm gonna save this as my background gradient. Okay, go ahead and hit save. And now we're ready to bring this inside of Power BI. So let's jump back into Power BI. Now this is gonna go as our canvas. So on the canvas, go ahead and browse for the image that we just saved. And here it is, background gradient, hit open. And the transparency, if you see if I bring it down to zero, it shows everything. I don't really want it to be zero. I'm gonna set it to 90%. It's gonna be subtle and you'll see why in a second. And then make sure the image fit is set to fit so that it takes up the entire space of our canvas. And now the last step, is to set our wallpaper. And I'll leave the canvas background open, maybe just to show you a few things. So this one, I'm gonna color it. And I'm gonna give it a dark, almost black color, but it's gonna be a purplish black. So 09051C sort of gives me this purple black color. And that looks good for me. I'm gonna leave the transparency as is. So now if you look at this, and just as a reminder of what our mock-up looks like, you see this is what we're working with, this area here. As long as I'm able to achieve this blue to sort of this purple pink effect, which I believe I'm capturing pretty close here, it may not be exact, and that's where you may wanna start messing around with either the transparency or also the settings in your gradient, how much blue, if you want the direction to go from bottom left to top right, I'll leave that up to you. Now we're gonna move on to adding some of the other elements to the dashboard. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background image. But let's go look at this, the mock again, and you'll notice that there's this image that runs across the background, sort of this graphic. And so that, this is the one that we're gonna to add to the page. Now this is a stock image. This image isn't one that you have available to you. So this is where we might deviate a little bit on the tutorial but I would invite you to search the internet for you know, free stock photos or free vector graphics, uh, abstract images, and find something that you can use for your background. I'm gonna use this one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Power BI and I'm gonna go and insert this image. And we're gonna go to insert image. We're gonna select our image and we're gonna bring it in. Now, a few things that we gotta do. One is on the style. I'm gonna set that to fit so that it covers my entire uh, area here. And then I also need to set the properties to cover my canvas. So for the width, that's gonna be 1245. And for the height, I'm only gonna set it to about 881. So it's gonna go, I would say 80% of the page, it's gonna go up. So 881 and drag it all the way down. And there's our image right there. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do to make sure I keep everything in order is I'm gonna go to my selection pane and I'm gonna rename my image just because there's gonna be a lot of objects here. So I wanna make sure I keep track of everything. I'm gonna name this one uh, blurred image and I'm gonna make sure that this always is at the bottom. And the last thing that I'll probably do here is just really quickly give it a glance right here and it's not too far off. So you can see it in the background there and then here it is in Power BI. So I think we're good with our background image for now. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna build our page navigator along with this little graphic that you see here, sort of this folder that indicates which tab you're on. Now this folder uh, image here or this folder shape was actually built in a website tool called Figma. If you're interested in learning how this image was built, uh, let me know in the comments and I can plan maybe for a future tutorial to show how I put it together using this tool called Figma. But since this image has already been created, I'm just gonna go ahead and import it into Power BI. So I'm gonna go back into Insert Images and I'm gonna go find this Page Tab image. And I'm gonna bring it in. 
Uh, same thing, we're gonna do some styling on this. The scaling, I'm gonna set it to fit. And I gotta go ahead and plan the properties again. So for the height on this one, I'm gonna set it to 759. And then for the width, I'm gonna set the width to be 1204. So it gives me this nice shape right here. Now I gotta place this in its proper position. So on the position side, horizontally, I'm gonna set it at about 27 and vertically at about 152. So that's how it's gonna look like on our dashboard. And next, I'm gonna add the page navigator. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename my tabs. So this is gonna be my summary tab. I'm gonna have a tab called chat and one called leads. So imagine someone coming onto your website, right? It's gonna show any chat interactions you've had and any information about those individuals. So back here to get our page navigator on our Power BI page here, I'm gonna to go to buttons, navigator, page navigator, right? And it's gonna go right here. I'm just gonna approximate this for now. And I gotta do a few different things to style this and, and get it to really be able to match sort of the example that I have here on this mock-up. All right, so let's get to styling this one. Okay, so if I go over here to style and I'm gonna be working with the default style for now, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna leave this to Sego UI. I am gonna bold the text and I'm gonna change this to be about a font 18. And the font color, I'm gonna change it to white and I'm gonna verify that it is aligned horizontally and vertically, which it is here. And now for the color of the selected item, so if I go here and I, and I change it to selected, uh, same thing, I'm gonna set the same defaults. But for the color here, I'm gonna use a custom color, sort of a teal color that I saw in the mock. So my custom color is gonna be 3AFFEF in this teal color here. And that, that looks good right there. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna jump down over here to grid layout. So let me close the style for a quick sec. I'm gonna jump to grid layout. And in this one, I'm gonna set the padding to just be one. And back on the style, I'm gonna turn off any borders around this and I'm gonna turn off any fill. And so now you get to see what it starts to look like over here. The last thing really is for me to now shape it into place, make it the right height, the right width. Uh, I'm gonna set the height to 51 and the width to be 469. And I'm gonna set the position to be 41 on the horizontal. And then on the vertical, so you can see it's, it's lined up here, right? Uh, on the vertical, I just need to be able to move it uh, probably up a little bit. So I'm gonna move it to 163. And then that should put it in a pretty good spot there. And the last thing that I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna add a title to my page. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a text box. Now when I add titles, I actually don't like to use the text box. So for the most part on the text box, I'm just gonna hide uh, the background. And what I like to do is I like to use the title of the text box as my title. So in here, I'm gonna just name this, probably just name this web traffic dashboard or I don't know, whatever you wanna call yours. And now I gotta set some of the settings here. So for the font, I'm gonna go back to that Sego UI that we were using. So Sego UI, I am gonna bold it. And of course, we're gonna change the text color here to be white so that we can see it. And on the font size, I'm gonna set mine to be 28. So slightly bigger than, than what I have over here. I'm just gonna roughly move this into place And then I have some actual uh, dimensions that uh, I have that I that I'm using anyway. So I'm using a height of 55 with a width of 632. And same thing, I want to make sure it's positioned correctly. So on the horizontal, I'm going to use 55, and on the vertical, I'm using 51. So so far, this is what it looks like. If we go back to the mock-up, okay. Remember, we get we did the title. And so far we've done our page navigation and I'm satisfied with what it looks like so far. Now the next part that I'm gonna show you is we're gonna go and we're gonna start to build these containers, 
right? These are the subsections of our different data sets. And so that's what we're going to put together on the page. Um, let's jump over there. If you look at this container, one thing that you're able to see is you're able to see the background image. Remember our background image right here? You see how this is all shaped? It, well, if you go to the mock, you're able to see there's transparency here. Now this transparency, you can achieve a level of transparency inside of Power BI, but it's not just transparent. The other thing you'll notice is each of these containers, it follows the same type of uh, gradient. They go from like a blue over to a pinkish purple. So that is something that we cannot do directly inside of Power BI. So we gotta go back to PowerPoint because we need the transparency and we need the gradient. And those are two things that we can do inside of PowerPoint. So let's jump over back into our PowerPoint where we created our background gradient. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new slide. So in here, we're gonna insert another rectangle. However, it's not just any rectangle. We gotta do the rectangle with the rounded corners because it's not just a straight rectangle. Uh, if you see here, these have a slight round on the corner. And so I don't want just a solid rectangle. So rectangle with the rounded corners, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw uh, my image, just kind of approximate it. And the one thing that I am gonna do when I'm in this step is I'm gonna adjust this yellow button here. This adjusts the roundness of the corner, see? And so I don't want completely round, but kind of right around here. I do want some roundness, but I'm, I want more of a rectangle effect with a slight round on my corner. So I'm gonna adjust that. And once this is adjusted, same thing, we're gonna right click and we're gonna go format our shape. Now I'm gonna set the following dimensions because this fits my canvas. And so I'm gonna set this to 1.64 there and about 3.33 here. All right, that's good there. And going back to my line, I don't want a border, so I'm gonna hit no line. And then going over to our fill, same thing, we want a gradient fill. Now I'm gonna leave this linear here. And the direction though, I want this to go from left to right this time. So it looks to be this fourth one here, changing the direction of my gradient. Now I wanna make sure that the angle is zero. And just like last time, we're gonna delete all of these stops here, except for the two on the edges. And we're gonna color the stops. And we're actually gonna use the same colors that we used last time. So I'm gonna select this blue color here. And for this right one here, we're gonna use the pink color that we used. And so we get this nice gradient here. Now remember I told you that we're not just adding a gradient the way that we did with our background. We gotta add a layer of transparency. And that transparency, we're gonna add in here in PowerPoint. So once again, with my gradient stop clicked, you see this transparency bar there? I'm gonna set this to about 95% transparent. And I'm gonna do that with the other, the right gradient stop. So I'm gonna click on it, set it to about, oh, that's the position, set it to about 95% transparency. And it's gonna give me this gradient right here. It's really hard to see, but it's right there, right? It's pretty transparent. So to get it ready for Power BI, go ahead and right click the shape. And just like last time, I'm gonna go and hit save as picture, make sure it's a PNG, and I'm gonna find the folder where I'm gonna save it. Now this one I'm gonna name containers, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now all that's left is for us to bring it over into Power BI. Just like last time, go ahead and insert image. I'm gonna go ahead and find my image containers, uh, bring it in. Now, same thing, let's go set the scaling to fit, and then we gotta set our property, so our height, and then where we want the position to be. Now, for the height of this one, I'm gonna set it to 314, and then for the width, it's gonna be 562. And this one, I'm gonna line it up horizontally at about 52, and then vertically at about 244. And with the container in place, all I really have to do now is just copy and paste it, with the duplicate slightly in place, I just gotta adjust it slightly. I'm gonna set this horizontal to about 638. Uh, the vertical is gonna stay at 244. The rest of my dimensions should be roughly the same. I think it shrunk a little bit, so I'm gonna set it back to 562. And that looks good right there. And then I just gotta create one more. And this is gonna serve as the one down here. Uh, same thing, all I really should have to adjust is just a rough estimate of the position 
For this slightly bigger one, I'm gonna change the height a little bit to just be about 307 so it fits nicer on the page. The width, this one is gonna be uh, 1156 and we wanna be able to line it up with this one here. So the horizontal has to be 52 and then our vertical at about 579. And so now our containers are in place. And more importantly, they have a gradient and they've retained their transparency. So you can still see the background image. And I think overall this is looking uh, pretty good. If we go back to the mock, you see we have this container, this container, and then we've built this container. They are transparent and they have a nice gradient shape. Now, same thing, you can play around with with how transparent each of these are or how far you want the blue to come in on the gradient, all those things you're able to tweak around inside of PowerPoint, save your image, and then bring it into Power BI. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this as is and I'm gonna continue with the rest of, of the dashboard. Okay, with our different containers in place, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the container title, you could say. So the little icons that you see here, along with the header. So let's jump back into Power BI. And in order to build the headers here, I'm gonna go back, insert a text box. And if you recall, I don't like to write the text in here. So we're just gonna turn off the background. We're gonna turn on the title and I'm gonna bring my text into here. I'm gonna name this page visits summary. So a summary of what happened and how many people visited my page. Let's set the text color to white so that we can start to see it. I'm gonna set the font to the same one that we've been using, which is Sego UI. I'm gonna bold it, and I'm gonna move this up to about 17. Now we gotta adjust the properties a little bit. Now for the height, it doesn't need to be that tall, so 29 should be pretty good. And then I'll leave the width at about 300, but I do have to adjust the position of this on the page. So for the horizontal position, I'm gonna set this to 118. And then for the vertical position, we're gonna set this to about 271. And so this is where it's gonna fit on the page. Uh, and now all I have to do is copy and paste this two, two more times and then get the rest of my headers. And there we go. So now I have all of my headers in the proper place. And all I have to do now is bring in my icons and they're gonna to go to the left of the header. Like I mentioned, grab whatever icons you can from a web page. just do a quick Google search and you can find some. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the images that I have. So icons and for the first one, let's bring in this bullseye. You can see it's uh, we, we gotta size it up a little bit. So the style, once again, we're gonna set it to fit and the properties, which is usually the more important part. So the height on these ones, it's gonna be a perfect square. I'm gonna do 32 by 32. And then on my position here for the bullseye, this one's gonna be over here on the interaction summary. So about 666 and then vertically at about 271 to match the header. And so that's where that one's gonna go. And there we go. So now they're all in their proper place. Um, if any of them seem a little bit out of place for you, you can always just adjust them a little bit and get them lined up uh, however you want them. Now, I do have some other stock images that I found online. And so we're gonna bring those in here to get it to match the rest of the dashboard. So let me go get another one of my images here. So let me show you what, what those look like here. So this image here, same thing. I'm gonna set it to style fit. Now, once again, you can find a, a lot of different abstract images on the web. So find something that works for you in the right colors for the dashboard that you're building. Uh, this is just the ones that I'm using. And let me show you what it looks like. And it really adds a really, really nice touch to the dashboard. It's gonna make it really pop. And so the height, I'm gonna set it to 322. And the width, I'm gonna set this one to 290. The position horizontally, this one's gonna go at about 323. And then vertically, we're gonna move it up a little bit to 237. So it's gonna go right there. It doesn't look like much right now, but let me start to add a few of the other uh, images that I have. What I'm gonna add here is now this particle image that you see. 
So I'm going to go back into my images, bring in the particles, same thing. I got to style these uh, to be about fit and then just adjust my properties, my size and my position. For the height, this one's going to be 315 with a width of about 281. We're going to place it right around here. So for the position, we're going to get it really close. So this one's going to be 333 and then vertically 244. And so that's looking pretty good right on that card that we just built. And lastly, I have one more to bring in and that's gonna be this uh, sort of this really cool blue looking color here that I wanna run across the bottom of this card here. So style, I'm gonna set it to fit, go back to my properties and adjust my height, adjust my width, adjust my position. So on the height on this one, I actually wanted to match the entire card, so I'm going to set it 318 and about 562 is the width and then we just got to get it right into place and this one's going to go at about 638 vertically and then move it up a little bit at about 244. So those images add a really nice touch to the rest of this dashboard and it's really really helped us match the tone of the mock that I have here. Right, you can see those lines, you can see the particles. Um, a few other things that maybe you didn't notice, there's these little gray lines that are here. So I'm gonna add those next just to get the full layout done. So let's jump back into Power BI. Okay, so let's wrap up the template by adding the gray lines. Uh, these ones are pretty simple, right inside of Power BI. Go ahead and just grab a line. Right, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see here, um, but we're same thing, we're gonna have to, to shape this around a little bit. So if we go to our style, I don't want any fill. So we don't want to fill, but we do want a border. So for the border, uh, I'm going to set this to a gray. If you remember the, the lines were gray. So a nice gray color is just the type CCCCC. So six C's give you this nice gray color. And for the width, we're going to leave it at one. And now the transparency, we don't want it to be this hard. So I'm going to move it to about 80% transparency. Give it this subtle gray looking here. Now this line, uh, likewise, the only thing we got to do here is set the properties correctly. And so the height, we're going to set about 12. We don't need a crazy giant line. And the width on this one, I'm going to set to be 505. This one's going to be sort of a longer line because it's got to run across the cards here. And now we just got to place this one uh, into the proper position. Uh, this one's going to be horizontal 668. And then vertically, we're going to drop it down to 425. And so right around there, it's going to look pretty nice. So if you've stuck around with me this far, I would say congratulations. We've successfully built the template. Uh, really, the last remaining steps from here are to populate our visuals over the page. I mean, I think this is looking really, really good. Most of you can probably take what you've learned here and start to build your own dashboards. You're probably familiar with, you know, putting the visuals on the page. Um, it's mostly just the template part that might be a little bit tricky, but let's see if we can finish up the rest of this dashboard. And if you have found this tutorial useful so far, uh, a thumbs up or a comment on the page is honestly the biggest way to show that appreciation. And honestly, the biggest way to support the channel is simply by joining along, or you can support me directly by sending across a super thanks. Uh, I really appreciate all the love and support for the channel. So let's see if we can wrap this up with a few visuals on the page now. If we go back to the mock, you see that we're pretty much all the way there. Now it's just the Power BI visuals that have to be brought in. Um, and then we have a few of these little visuals that we got to start to bring into the presentation as well. So let's see if we can wrap up this bottom section first. All right, so for these tables down here, the one thing that you'll notice about them is they are completely transparent. So how do we achieve a fully transparent table inside of Power BI? Well, let's take a look first by loading a table. Now I've already loaded some dummy data just so that I can use. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a table visual. So go ahead and click on the table icon. We'll bring it down here. I'll bring in a few of my data points. And this is the standard table that you get with Power BI. Now the first step in achieving the transparent table is we're gonna go over here into the style presets. And instead of default, we're gonna set it to none. And after setting it to none, go over to general and go ahead and turn off the background. 
And so you're gonna see some transparency now. And it's actually really, really close to what we want. Now let me just uh, resize it and put it into position. So the height, I'm gonna set to 226. The width, we're gonna set to 258. Make sure it fits right into this little square here. The position, we're gonna go over and adjust that. So horizontally, I gotta set this to 69. And then vertically, we're gonna set it to 655. So now let's go adjust our values and bring in a little bit of color. So on the values, we're gonna set the text color to be white. We are also gonna change the alternate text color to be white. And we're gonna change the font to be DIN. So I don't want it to match my headers. The uh, font size I'm gonna leave at 10. And then the last thing I really have to do here is change the grid and turn off that horizontal grid. And that's looking pretty good so far. Now there are three things that I'm still noticing with this table. One is we can see the headers. And then the other one is we can see sort of this header and this total uh, outline. So for the totals, not to worry about, we can run down to totals, go ahead and turn those off. It gets rid of that little line as well. But for the headers, there is no way to turn the headers off. Now, not only is there no way to turn the headers off, but there is also no way to set the text color as a transparent color because we don't just wanna turn this to white. If we look back at the example here, there are no headers. This is, this is a table title, but these aren't headers. So for us to remove the headers inside of Power BI, we really have to turn the font color to be a transparent color, sort of like this one here. So let me create a duplicate table and I'll show you what I mean. So in this duplicate table, there is no way for me to turn this off. Um, there is a transparent color and that color is six Fs followed by two zeros, but I cannot enter that into Power BI. So there's no way for me to make it transparent, at least as far as I'm aware of, uh, without doing this outside of Power BI. So in order to achieve that transparent header, uh, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to build a custom JSON theme file. And you don't really have to worry about anything. Uh, this should be pretty simple. I'll show you how to do it. But also I've attached the code on the JSON theme file in the description. So you can just copy and paste that into a Word document, not a Word document, copy and paste it into Notepad or Notepad++. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open a blank Notepad file and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna be copying in. All right, so here I am in a blank Notepad file. And if you copied the, the JSON text that I've added into the link, go ahead and paste it into your notepad file. And you're gonna see this right here. Now, you don't have to change yours. I'm just gonna change one thing on mine. I'm gonna add it back in later, but I'm not worrying about it right now. Right now, my main concern is being able to turn these headers transparent. So this code that you see here will accomplish that exactly. So first it's just naming our theme. It's gonna be called the Dapper Dash theme. And then under our visual styles, we're gonna set a couple of settings for the table. And so what this is doing is it's saying, hey, for the column headers on any table, go ahead and change the font color to be this color right here. And this color represents a transparent color inside of Power BI. So now all I have to do is save this right here. I'm gonna save it as a JSON file. I already have one, but I'm gonna override it so you can see. So I'm gonna overwrite it over theme, hit save. Okay, and I'm just gonna minimize this for now. Now to load the theme inside of Power BI, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go here to the view and you're gonna go browse for themes. You're gonna go locate the theme that you just created and hit open, it should import it. Mine says the import was successful and I'm gonna hit close. Now you can see the difference between my two tables. This table is still showing white because I've manually have changed the color, but the original default table, you'll notice that the headers have disappeared. Now they didn't exactly disappear, they're still there, right? You can see job title and some of visitors. It's just, it is now transparent. So I no longer need this other table. It was just for demo purposes. Uh, but the last thing that you'll see is we still have the header grid line. And that's what that little piece of code that I removed. You should have it on yours you shouldn't have removed it, but let me go add it back into my notepad theme file. Okay, so back in my theme, I'm just gonna go ahead and add that line that I removed. This one takes care of the grid, so it sets the outline color to be transparent as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, 
and I have to go back and reload my theme again. Browse for themes, click it, open, successful, and now you'll notice that that grid line has disappeared and I've achieved a fully transparent table. The last thing that I have to do with this table now is adjust perhaps the row padding and then the columns space them out a little bit. So let me bring this in, bring this out to here, and for this table, I'm actually going to reduce the, I'm going to remove the text wrap to shrink my columns and I'll down take the size a little bit. And then the last thing I have to set is the padding. So let's go to grid. Under grid, there is this options and then row padding. So I'm going to set the row padding to about six. So right around there. And I'm also going to sort my table descending because I want to see uh, the top visitors by job title that came to my web page. And now if we go back to our mockup, the last thing we're missing is just this header right here. So let's go add that header. What I'm going to do is bring in a text box, bring in my text box. I'm going to turn off the background, turn on my title, and then I got to name this. Now this is going to be my page visitors by title. And remember most of my fonts on my headers are going to be the Sego UI. I'm going to shrink the text size to be about 12 and change the text color to be white. And actually I apologize, the text color isn't going to be white because on my mockup it's a little bit of a gray. So I'm actually going to set this to be the color C, 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 C. So just six C's. It kind of gives it a subtle gray look. And now I just got to move this into place. So under the properties, I'm going to change the height to be about 28. The width is going to be, let's see, approximately 218. That looks good. And then for the position, we got to move this horizontal. I'm going to set this to 73. And then on the vertical, 666. And there it is. So you can adjust this. Actually, this is a little too low. I'm going to move it up just a tiny bit. And there. So now if you look at this table here and you go back and you compare it to the mockup table, uh, it's pretty close. The only thing that might be a little bit different is the font or maybe the size, but you can tweak around with yours and, and adjust it the way that you like it. Uh, this is good for me. I like it the way it is right now. All that's left is for me to build the other three tables out. So let me snap my fingers and voila. I now have all my tables on my dashboard. Now this is just the same table copied over, but that's okay. I haven't really loaded my data just yet. These are just data that's going to be in place for when I actually start to load my real data. But with these tables in place, let's go back to the mockup and let's see what the next part is. And for me, the next thing that I'm going to build is, are these little indicator cards that you see here. So you'll notice this one, all of these here, and then these ones that run here, they're exactly the same type of visual, right? It's a KPI number on the top and then a title on the bottom. So I'm gonna build one and then just copy it for the rest of these. All right, so for these indicator cards, what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a multi-row card visual, which is this one here. We start with a blank one. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my callout value. So let's just say uh, page total visitors. And then let's go and we'll adjust our callout values first. Uh, same thing as our table. We're going to use this DIN font. And I'm actually going to set this to 38. So a little bit bigger font. And then we're going to color it white. Now the category labels. So if we go there, we're going to change the same thing. DIN. I'm going to change this one to 10. So a little bit smaller. And then for the color, I'm going to use a custom color. So I'm going to use B3, 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 uh, sort of a grayish color. And now for the cards, the accent bar, we're going to turn that off. Now let's get this card into place before turning off the background so you can see the magic. And for the height of this one, I'm going to set it to 85 and then the width 117 and we're going to position this in the right place. 
horizontal 666 and then vertical for 330. And then all that's really left to do is for us to turn the background off. So let's go to effects, background, off. And voila. And actually, since this card is in my interaction summary section and not my page visits, I'm gonna actually copy it and paste it because this one's gonna be my page visits. This one is gonna be, let's just say my social clicks. These are the people that clicked on social media on my webpage. So social clicks, and then we're gonna adjust this one to be my total visitors. And all I gotta do with this one is just slightly change the properties, get it into the right position. So horizontal, I'm gonna set this one to 84. So pretty close. And then 335 vertical. And so now I have total visitors to my webpage and then my total social media clicks uh, for those who interacted on my webpage. And for the rest of these, uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste and put them into place. So same thing, I'm just gonna snap my fingers and there we have it. So I've used the exact same uh, dummy data to populate all of these other multi-row KPI cards and we're ready to move on to the next part. Okay, so for this next part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these social media cards that you see here, uh, starting with the background. And if you notice, all the background really is, it's essentially just one of these cards that we've already added, one of these bigger cards, right? It's just a smaller version of it. It has the transparency and it has the, the gradient, right? Running from blue to purple. The only difference I see is one, it's smaller. The edges are a little bit rounder and it's not quite as transparent as this one here. So let's, I think this should be pretty easy to get these built. So let's put these together inside of PowerPoint. So in PowerPoint, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the other container that I've built, the one for the car, the bigger cards. I'm gonna paste it, bring it over here. I know it's a little difficult to see. Uh, remember I said that the edges are a little bit rounder, so I'm gonna bring the yellow in a, ta a tad bit. I can't really see it, but I know I'm bringing it in a little bit. And then those little cards also weren't quite as transparent. So I'm gonna go format this shape over here under fill and the transparency. Instead of 95, I'm gonna bring these down to, let's say 90%, make it a little less transparent than the other ones. And that should be good. So now if I click away, you should be able to see a slight difference, right? This one is a little bit more visible than this one. And all I have to do now is save my image. So right click, save as picture. And I'm gonna save these once again as a PNG. I'm gonna name them social containers and hit save. So now let's go back into Power BI and get all of these loaded. All right, so back in Power BI, I'm gonna go ahead and hit insert. We're gonna bring in those images, the social containers, hit open. Okay, there it is. And all I really have to do here is a little bit more of that formatting, get it into the right position. So for the style, scaling is gonna be fit. I want it to fit the entire container. And then for the properties, we are gonna resize these. So I'm gonna set these to 70 by 70. And then for this first one, I'm gonna position it at about 785 to 334 vertical. And there we go. So the first one is in place. It's looking pretty good. Now I have to bring in my social media icons. And, and for the social media icons, uh, these are ones that I've had available to me. So these are the ones that I'm gonna use. Um, once again, I invite you to go onto the internet and find ones that work for you. If you want a good helper page, I recommend freeiconshop.com. So in here, you can search for icons. So let's just say you wanted a Twitter icon. Right, you can grab one of these, you can change the color to white, to gray, adjust it however you want. So definitely use this website as a resource, free icon, freeiconshop.com. I'll put the link in the description, uh, but I'm gonna use the ones that I have available. So I'm gonna go back into Power BI and I'm gonna go search for my images. So let me go up here. And the first one that I'm gonna bring is the Twitter PNG. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. It's gonna look blurry, but no worries. It's actually gonna get scaled down. So for the style, once again, I'm gonna set it to fit. 
going over to general under the properties for the height I'm gonna do a height of 28 and for the width I'm gonna do a width of 30 and now I got to place it right into place inside of my social media card so under the position I'm gonna set the horizontal to 805 and the vertical to 344 and this is looking pretty good right now so now I just got to get a KPI number in here this one is pretty simple. You can just go grab a card and start to bring in data into the card. So I'm gonna go grab my visitors and I'm gonna grab, let's just say the variance. Actually, to keep it simple, I'm just gonna go grab the minimum. And then all I have to do is remove a few things. I'm gonna remove the category label and I'm going to remove the background on this one. And going back to the visual, I'm gonna change my color on my callout value to be white. I'm gonna change the font. Actually, the font is already DIN, which is the one that we've been using. So that one's fine. And then just change the font size to 12. And last but not least, I gotta position it again. So for the size on this one, I need it to fit inside of my card. So for the height, I'm gonna set it to 28. And then for the width, I'm gonna set it to 70. And the horizontal position, I'm going to set to 784 and vertical to 370. And uh, there we have it. That's looking pretty good. Now, the last thing for me to do is to go get LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram into Power BI. And that should be pretty simple. It should just be a matter of copy and paste. So in my Power BI file, all I have to do now is once again, click my fingers. And there we have it. All of my social media cards are now on my page. They're looking great. Uh, let's see what else is left for us to do. If we go back, the only thing I really see here is to add the slicers and we are pretty much done. So let's wrap this up by adding a few slicers into Power BI. All right, so for these slicers here, let's jump back into Power BI. And this should be pretty, uh, pretty simple. We just gotta go ahead and insert a slicer and let's bring in a date column. And let's format the slicer a little bit. So for the slider, we don't need it. I'm going to remove it. For the slicer header, also don't need it. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm also going to remove the background. All right, this is looking good. So now let's adjust the visual a little bit. So under the values, we are going to set the font to be DIN. I'm going to change the font size to be 10. And then I'm going to color this white. And now I just have to get it into the proper place. So going back into my properties, uh, let's first set the height and the width. So for the height on this one, I'm gonna use 47. And for the width, we're gonna use 255. And then on the position on the page, horizontal, it's gonna go 970. And then vertical, it's gonna go 167. And that's looking pretty good right there. Now I'm just gonna insert a little bit of a, a title for my slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a text box. Same thing, kind of drag my text box over here a little bit. Let me go turn off the background on this uh, text box, turn on the title, and I'm going to name this date. The font I'm going to leave as DIN, and then I'm just going to drop the font size to be 10 and change my text color to be white. And I want this one to pop a little bit, so I'm gonna set it to bold. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna go and adjust the properties. The height on this one, I'm gonna set it to be 20. And then on the width, I'm gonna set this one to be 47. And I just gotta get it into place now. Horizontal, this one's gonna go 935, just left of my dates, and then vertical 185. And there we go. So now I have my date slicer in place. It matches the rest of the theme of my dashboard. I just need to add one more slicer in case the user wants to navigate across different web pages and see what the analytics show for all of their different web pages. Let's just make sure that everything is working, right? So I can switch between websites. Okay, that filter is looking pretty good. The date filters are looking pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks, especially if we compare it to the mock-up that we built, right? It, there is a way to sort of round the edges on the filter. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm mostly just concerned with getting the majority of the look and feel 
And I think that we've accomplished that um, so far. Now, if you stuck around uh, this long, uh, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. We've completed everything needed to build out this dashboard. I'm gonna finish it up adding some more mock data and I'm gonna show you what the final result looks like. So let me publish this one and we'll see what it looks like on the server. All right, so just a reminder, this was the design, the mock-up that I had to work with. Uh, so take a good look and let me know how you think I did. So let me show you what the Power BI version on the server looks like. And here's the one on the Power BI server. This one is complete with my filters. So as I browse through different web pages, you can see my, da my data start to change. As I adjust the dates, same thing, my data starts to change. So everything is working on this one. Uh, what about the tabs? So I did build out the other pages. So this is my summary of my web traffic. As I move over to the chats, I wanna see what interactions happened inside of my web page. So here are the different chats, right? Who said what? Uh, once again, this is tied to my filters. As I move across different web pages, I get to see the interactions across those web pages. And then if I go to my leads, some more information on those people that visited my page, I get to see more about them, what kind of things they did on my web page, the average time they spent uh, on my site, and uh, same thing, back to the summary. Uh, on average, on web page four, people spent four minutes and 48 seconds on that site compared to web page one where they spent five minutes. If I look over on my interaction summary, I get to see what social media they clicked on or how they arrived to my page. And then some information about those users, uh, where they visited from, what companies, what were their business interests, their job titles. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with this dashboard. I hope you enjoyed following along. I hope this helped you. If it did, once again, I invite you to, to give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know in the comments what you think of it. If you are interested in seeing more dashboard tutorials, quite like this one, right? Maybe less DAX, less Power BI visuals, but more dashboards, let me know in the comments and I can prepare some other dashboards for you. But uh, thanks for stopping by. I invite you to join the channel, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.